Oh my God, it's right. <sighs> it's happening. Josie, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Oh my God, my heart is racing. <laughs> I, w I just wanted to call and say uh, congratulations and welcome to the PFL Challenger Series. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in February 2023. Uh, we, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about you and uh, I know you've had an amazing Muay Thai career. And so I can't wait to see you live. Today. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray. I'm honoured and I'm so excited. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this epic opportunity. And I will make you proud. And I just, I can't wait. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Well, you take care and I look forward to seeing you soon. I'll see you very soon. Thanks, Ray. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, my God, I'm shaking. Across the globe, from Australia to Ireland to Brazil, from the sands of Saudi Arabia to the beaches of South Florida, 56 MMA fighters are preparing for the biggest opportunity of their lives. I've been waiting for this moment and now it's time for it to pay off. The 2023 PFL Challenger Series on Fubo TV. The journey to prominence begins tonight. It's the chance to fight and earn a PFL contract. Whoa! The first step towards competing for $1 million and the title of world champion. Oh, oh my goodness! The road has been paved already. Oh my God! Taylor pulled the upset! It is possible. Congratulations, Delano Taylor, from the Challenger Series to the PFL Welterweight Championship. You just have to want it. I promise you guys, I'm coming for the finish. You just have to work for it. My goal in MMA is to be a world champion, to be the best. And when the moment comes, you have to seize it. Oh, here's the knee! Stay with me! For a first round finish! Get ready to follow the rising stars of MMA as they fight to go from challenger to champion. Since creating the first ever women's lightweight division in 2018, the Professional Fighters League has been at the forefront of women's MMA. In 2023, the PFL is on a mission to take their efforts to the next level. By launching two new weight divisions in the PFL Challenger Series, the women's flyweights and women's featherweights. Last season, the Challenger Series helped launch lightweight Martina Yandrova's career in the PFL. Martina is the winner and also gets the contract to the season. And in her first season, she fought impressively. progressing all the way to the semifinals, where she ultimately fought and lost against two-time PFL champion Kayla Harrison. If you're new to the PFL Challenger Series, this is how it works. Live from Orlando, Florida, the PFL hosts eight straight weeks of fights. Each night, there are four fights, but only one PFL contract awarded. For the challengers, winning isn't enough. They must also impress the celebrity judges and the fans, both of whom cast a vote. The contract winner then moves into the 2023 PFL season, where they have a shot at a world title and $1 million. What's up, Dave? PFL President of Fighter Operations Ray Sefo is the man leading the effort to recruit and sign the best fighters from around the world for the 2023 PFL Challenger Series roster. Next is the women's flyweight. I'm super excited for Chelsea Hackett to be part of the team. She's 3-1 and one as an MMA fighter. I'm told that, you know, she still needs to work on the ground, uh, but apparently her striking is, you know, at the highest level. Former world champion. But yeah, no, I think she's going to be great. Chelsea uh, likes the camera. The camera likes her. She was on the Australian Survivor in 2021. That's right. I mean, there's a lot of good things she brings to the table outside yeah. of... Uh, her striking ability. I'm looking forward to Chelsea getting in there and showing off those skills, and hopefully she can put on a good performance, yep. maybe earn herself a contract. Yeah, I think she's gonna be great. Chelsea Hackett. Queensland is definitely known for its beautiful beaches, its white sand, amazing weather, hot weather, Things I do for fun when I'm not training. Love the beach, always down the beach. Love the sun. I love shopping, I shop a lot. 
I also have made some TikToks with my partner Jake. Uh, they're pretty funny. My partner Jake is a filmmaker, uh, so it is awesome to have him on this journey with me. Jake videos a lot of my training sessions, my fights, and has done for the last few years, so it's really special that we, we can do this together. Uh, congratulations and welcome to the PFL Challenger Series. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in February 2023. Can you believe it? Put the camera down. <laughs> Living in a family of fighters, it's epic. When we all started Taekwondo and martial arts, it was a, a family affair. It was something we could all enjoy and do together, but we're all very competitive in our own ways. And it just helped us all grow as a family. And the confidence, the connection between all of us through that time was it was really, really special. It was a pinnacle moment of me growing up, was training with my mum, training with my dad. I still, dad is one of my coaches. Being a champion in Muay Thai, it's really important that me, myself, doesn't disrespect the other disciplines and underestimate them. I am now five years into training MMA, and only now is everything coming together, is everything starting to feel super comfortable. My fighting journey has been a very long one. I've been fighting for 12 years, which is a very long time for someone that's obviously still so young. You know, me being 24, I still have so much more time, which excites me. And I know how long and how far I've got to go. Uh, and I'm so excited that this is where I can showcase my skills and, and fight for and represent Australia. Getting this opportunity to win a PFL contract is a testament to my hard work, but it just shows that the 12 years that I've been grinding and fighting for something bigger in my future and my, my career, I have prepared for this for years. This is obviously a huge opportunity for me and that's what I'm going in with, the mentality of this person wants what I want and they can't have it. This is my cage, this is my dream, my career, and it really does not matter who stands in front of me on the 24th of Feb. It is going to end one way, and that is me with the PFL contract. My name is Chelsea Nahama Hackett. I'm 24 years old, fighting out of Gold Coast, Australia. I'm a former Muay Thai world champion, and I'm so excited to be fighting in the PFL Challenger Series in the women's flyweight division. When we come back, relive the best women's lightweight drama from last year's Challenger Series. Oh, again! Big shot! Again! It drove us right hand like a laser! Plus, the wild one gets set for her second shot at a PFL contract. Twenty twenty three will mark the second season of the PFL Challenger Series, where fighters have the opportunity of a lifetime the chance to fight and earn a PFL contract. Last year, the women's lightweights provided fans with some of the most compelling action of the entire series. That's right, fight fans. Our third straight week of PFL Challenger Series action from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Women's lightweights take center stage, all fighting for a chance to be part of the 2022 PFL Women's Lightweight Season. Oh! Speaking of women's lightweights, that is the queen herself, Kayla Harrison, a two-time PFL women's lightweight world champion. She's here tonight as a coach and a corner. Tonight, an international affair, to say the least. This is all about impressing the celebrity panel, impressing the fans. Here is our four-fight card. Fighting out of Matamata, New Zealand, making my pro debut, Michelle, the wild one, Montague. There's Kayla Harrison in the corner. Nice combination here. Put a duck under here, and up and down they go. Michelle Montague with a nice oh. entrance all the way around the back. Immediately goes to work with the right hand. And now she has both hooks in, full control for the back. She's about to get a rear naked choke here, Sean. This is tight, and there's a tap. Stop, stop, stop. Larry Folsom steps in and stops it. Michelle Montague, a first round finish. And a proud Kayla Harrison standing cage side. Victorious in her pro debut. Michelle Montague, congratulations. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, making my pro debut after a fight.
five and zero amateur career, Jesslyn, the wrecking ball, Michelle. Oh, long right hands there from Michelle. Oh, they are trading right now. Punches and punches here in the early goings, Kenny. Michelle catches the kick and dumps Dorney to a beehive. But Je Jeslin's landing some big shots in there, Sean. Now really hurting Dorney. That right hand is finding a home for Jeslin Michelle. Oh, again. Big and shot. Again. And she's doing a good job mixing it up. Big right hand. Oh, another right hand. And this time Dorney is down. Pounding away, and that's it. Jeslin Michelle, a finish. I want to let you know you have a very strong right hand. It will be a force of reckoning, and a lot of people will be scared of it. From Prague, Czech Republic, I'm Martina Indrova. I'm pumped about these two women, man. They are so excited. It's amazing. It's a big shot there from Indrova. Oh, big shots! Indrova's right hand! Off the retreat, another right hand! Like a laser! Martina Indrova! All right, with that, we're going to narrow it down to our finalists. Martina Yindrova, Jesslyn Michelle. Martina is the winner and also gets the contract for the season. Martina Yindrova gets the contract. Congratulations. PFL is launching two new women's divisions in 2023, the women's flyweights and featherweights. I'm really excited to bring uh, women's featherweight to the PFL Challenger Series. It's gonna be in the season in 2023 as well. Featherweight, One... not lightweight. Featherweight, yeah. not lightweight. We've uh, we've talked about this for a long time. Yeah, I know man. you're excited about it as well. And Michelle Montague's one. Man, I like this girl. She's one of Kayla's main training partners now. She's from New Zealand originally, trained out of city kickboxing. She picked up her first professional win in the Challenger Series in 2022. She picked up another win in Titan. She's getting closer. She needs more experience. We know that. A little bit green on the feet, but she's a heck of a grappler. She can do some damage, I think. Yeah, and, you know, and I think with Michelle, it's just it's just timing and, and experience. Um, but in, in terms of attitude and, you know, wanting to get out there and get it done, she already has that in, you know, in the back. And so a little bit more experience and then we can look at putting her in the season. Yeah. This is a girl who's meant to fight at 145. She's built for it. She's yeah. got the skills to compete. She's going to be something special down the road. Some good showers out today. Oh, that's a keeper. I'm 29. I'm from New Zealand and I grew up playing rugby in a small country town and, and helping dad and mum on the farm. And now I'm in Florida fighting. <laughs> The Wild One nickname came from, I think, from the moment I was like coming out the womb. I, uh, <laughs> I was a wild child through and through, and my parents always called me that. I'd like tackling everyone, riding the calves on the farm. Yeah, I've just been <laughs> a little bit on the wild side, like since day dot and through. So yeah, it's suited. For sure, obviously, the contact side of playing rugby has helped me transitioning into MMA. The wrestling to rugby side of it is so similar as well. Rugby is for sure the most popular sport in New Zealand. Uh, we grew up with a rugby ball in our hand like you do a baseball or, or a football, you know. I started playing at four years old because I, my, my dad was coaching the local like midgets team. I fell in love with it. I was the only chick in the boys team probably for like 10 years. When I first started training in May was seven or eight years ago and I'd go from literally 80 minute rugby game and then I'd go to like a jiu-jitsu tournament that same day because I wanted to do both so badly. And for me it was so easy because I'd go from this full contact physical sport with mouth gut in and go and do jiu-jitsu or striking or whatever, full contact with just mouth gut in. For me to represent New Zealand on such a, you know, a well-seen world stage is, is amazing. It's, it's such a good feeling. It's such a small country, small population, but we've got big hearts, big tickers, and like the likes of Jenna Fabian as well in the PFL, you know, for us to go out there with our flag on against all these big countries is, it's a really neat feeling, eh? This is a massive opportunity to have a turn at the Challenger Series again. Last year's fight was, uh, it was interesting, you know, I, I felt, I didn't feel like I was stronger or bigger than my opponent, but I definitely knew that I had the skills and techniques to beat her. A little duck under here, and up and down they go. Michelle Montague with a nice oh. entrance all the way around the back. And now she has both hooks in, full control from the back. She's about to get a rear naked choke. And there's the tap. Stop, stop, stop. 
Larry Folsom steps in and stops it. Michelle Montague, a first round finish. I was able to finish that without taking any damage, but I do know for a fact that my skills all around have improved so much since then. And I know that, you know, I'm going to be fighting a more athletic pool of girls uh, at 145, you know what I mean? For me, training at American Top Team, I think the biggest benefit would be it's right here, basically the heart of fighting. Every organisation, you know, that I could fight in is here. And the second big one is obviously the training partners. Training and being around Kayla is, um, there's like levels to that because we are like the same person, same sense of humour. We're both just, we just talk and, and hit. Just seeing the dominance, whether it's in her sparring with the guys or her drilling with the girls, even her, you know, putting me in my place. It's like, I think I learned so much more by those physical things than anything she could possibly say. Being able to really focus on, you know, every part of the game and uh, look back at the last two fights I've had this year and see, okay, yeah, you won, yeah, you got finishes in both of them. But like, where can someone capitalize on your mistakes? So for me, it's been it's been awesome to have the time and patience to be able to work on all of that, you know? So definitely going into this fight in February, I'll have a much more well-rounded skill set. To be part of the first PFL featherweight season for me would be massive. That it's a new division, it's gonna be interesting to see like who sets the standard. Obviously you've got a couple of girls from last year coming down a weight group, then they're obviously absolute dogs as well. But like it's gonna be fascinating to see like for the ones of us that make it in, how we step up to the plate with that, you know? I do miss like the farm and the countryside in New Zealand and my parents, but I, like I know that that's gonna be there like when the time's right also. So for me right now, the time is right to be here. Hey, I'm Michelle Montague. I'm fighting in the Challenger Series on February 3rd in the Women's Featherweight Division. I'm from Matamata, New Zealand, and I'm coming for that PFL contract. After the break, we go across the Atlantic to the Netherlands to meet another challenger ready to take her career to the next level. Seven weight divisions will compete in the 2023 Challenger Series, including, for the first time, the women's featherweight division. To build the roster, the PFL team has identified top talent from multiple countries, including the Netherlands, where they found the Dutch national judo champion, Sina van de Vierdonk. I'm excited, man. She's another judo girl making the transition to MMA. Yep. Three and one, all three wins by armbar. Uh, we saw Kayla come in, Ronda Rousey when she started, all these judo yep. women yep. come in and start arm barring everybody, snapping limbs and taking them home with them. You know, the great thing is she's only 21. That's what we're looking for in challengers. We're looking for young, yeah. up and coming, yep. hungry fighters looking to get that life changing opportunity. Living in Oz is nice because it's a small town and everybody knows each other. The people in the south are like funny and really kind. <laughs> I have two dogs. I have one a bigger one, it's white, it's called Lilo. And I have one a smaller dog, it's black and it's called Momo. They are both Pomeranians. <laughs> so really cute and fluffy and very sweet. They have their own Instagram account. I just um, made it for fun, but it's a little bit exploded. They have, uh, I think, 2,000 followers or something like now. Senna's very, very kind, very sweet, but if she doesn't like anything, she will tell you and you will know, okay, <laughs> she didn't like it. <laughs> I know Senna from the gym. I started training judo. She started training judo as well, and that's how we know each other. And after years and years, we finally uh, get to each other. It's really nice to have a boyfriend who understands the journey and understands why I will be a little grumpy when I don't have my food and stuff like that and always support me with training and I can train with him. He's very good in the wrestling game and the stand-up and everything so I can really learn from him. So I started judo you know, at 10 years old and I grew from there. I had a lot of tournaments. I've been teaching center for a really long time since the starting of her judo career. The first fight she fought when she was 16 years old, she won by armbar against uh, a girl that was, I think, uh, 25 or 26 years old. She acted really good with the pressure and she, she just loved it. I did a lot of international tournaments. I did uh, the national championships, so the Dutch championships. I won that two times. I've been to the uh, European Championships. I won the third prize there. I won a lot of tournaments and at one point I didn't feel the passion anymore for judo. I wanted to take up a higher step, so try to do MMA and I fell in love. I think this fight camp has already been the hardest fight camp till now because it's like 
you have this great goal and it finally can come true, like the 3rd of February, February, if I win, then it will be a big opportunity. So of course I'm like focused and 100% putting effort in it to win this. I will show PFL and the Challenger Series that I'm coming to fight and I want to finish her. My name is Anna van der Vedong, I'm 21 years old. I'm fighting from Oz, a small town in the Netherlands. I'm a Euro champion and I'm very excited to be fighting at the PFL Challenger Series in the featherweight division. Up next, it's a look at two other contenders who have already made some noise in the PFL. Oh, yeah, big shot! Yeah. Big right hand! Oh! There's the tap! Amanda Levy successful via submission! In the 2023 PFL Challenger Series, fighters will be competing for a life-changing PFL contract which could lead to a shot at $1 million and a world title. The women's featherweight division will feature new faces and returners, including an animated former professional wrestler who made some noise in last year's Challenger Series. Fighting out of beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, Jesslyn, the wrecking ball, Michelle. Big right hand. Oh, another right hand, and this time Dorney is down. Part of being an athlete now, you have to really be entertaining and make people feel happy or mad or whatever it might be, but just feel something. I have professional wrestling experience. I know what it's like to be backstage and know that I have to put on a show. And I think that pro wrestling has lent itself for me to fighting in that way. And I think that with fighting, if people know my story, they can get to know me better. With my first fight for the Challenges series, I was extremely excited. I knew that my opponent was an expert at what she did, but I'm multifaceted. I was one of the two finalists to be up for grabs for the contract. The fans voted for me, but uh, the final say was Ray. Martina is the winner and also gets the contract to the season. I was a little bummed, but I know that things work out for me and that's why I'm back. Joining Michelle in the featherweight division is a world-class jiu-jitsu practitioner coming off an impressive comeback in her PFL debut. Amanda Levy's a world champion in jiu-jitsu. Miranda Barber in the black and red trunks. Amanda Levy in the black and gray. Oh! Overhand right for Miranda Barber again! And another one! Levy recovers with some wrestling here. Nice, 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 Levy. That's, 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 that's deep, that's, that's, that's very deep. There's the tag! It was pretty cool, um, actually, getting like knocked down because I never got knocked down before. Done with that experience, though. So we're moving on. <laughs> if they're willing to have me back, I'm willing to fight all day. 2023 is primed to be a big year for the PFL, as two new women's divisions, the featherweights and flyweights, take to the cage in the Challenger Series. Each fighter will be looking to win a life-changing PFL contract. Who will meet the moment? Who will take the next step in their career and go from challenger to champion? Next time on Challenger to Champion, it's a closer look at the big boys, the heavyweights. There he goes, he finishes that single leg beautifully. Including one of the tallest fighters in all of MMA.